coming up in the news tonight. A new magistrate sworn in today. More cruise business for Grand Bahama this past weekend. And the country preparing to celebrate 48 years of independence. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, I'm Natalia Hall. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping the news tonight, a deadly plane crash taking place just off of Treasure Key Lake this afternoon. ZNS News has learned that the plane went down during bad weather. Reports say it is a private jet with a pilot and co-pilot on board. Information reaching our newsroom say the pilot and co-pilot were attempting to fly to March Harbor to get fuel for the aircraft when it went down and burst into flames. The two on board are believed to have perished. Now heavy rain and lightning storm preventing investigation from getting to the crash site earlier, but they have since been able to make it through the rugged terrain to the site to see the bodies of the two men where they were located. Now, this is a developing story, and we will have more details on this fatal crash off of Treasure Key as the information becomes available. What was Hurricane Elsa is now Tropical Storm Elsa. The weather system made landfall in Cuba today and is moving over western Cuba with heavy rain and is expected to pass near the lower Florida Keys on Tuesday. Elsa is moving towards the northwest near 14 miles per hour and this general motion is expected to continue tonight followed by a turn towards the northwest no, on Tuesday and towards the north on Tuesday night. A north-northeastward motion is expected to begin on Wednesday. No longer a threat to the Bahamas. Now Elsa has claimed three lives in the Caribbean thus far. In other news, Grand Bahama now has a new magistrate to assist in the administration of justice. A brief ceremony taking place this morning at the Garnet Lavarity Justice Center in the Supreme Court. Megan Shepherd was there. After serving as an attorney for eight years, Simone R. Brown taking her career to the next level. The Honorable Madam Justice Petra Adderley performing the official swearing-in ceremony in the Supreme Court. Brown pledging the oath of allegiance followed by the judicial oath. I, Simone Rochelle Brown, do swear that I will well and truly serve Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II her heirs and successors in the office of stipendary and circuit magistrate and will do right to all manner of people after the laws and usages of the Bahamas without fear or favor, affection or ill will. So help me God. Brown along with Justice Adderley signing Brown's instruments to seal Brown's new title. Justice Adderley noting that she has worked with Brown since being called to the bar in 2013 and expressing that she is confident that she will do well in this new capacity. As counsel appearing before me, she came prepared, tenacious, and made always very cogent arguments. She did not always win, but she always put up a good fight. And I have never have had cause to question her honesty with the bench, her integrity, and her ethics. I'm confident that she will bring that same preparedness and thoughtful deliberation to each and every case before her, and the strength, tenacity, and integrity that she displayed on the other side of the bench. I'm confident she'll bring that to this side of the bench. Brown was supported by friends and family, both in person and via Zoom. While thanking her support system, she also pledged her continued commitment to the fair execution of justice. During my tenure as an attorney at the bar, I always held in great pride my ethics and fairness dealing with any matter. And I am confident that now that I have taken this new role, that I will maintain that same spirit of ethics, fairness, and most importantly, impartiality on the bench. And the only thing that I can say 
is it is only through the grace of God that I am here. Brown, the daughter of well-known Grand Bahama attorney Simeon Brown, becomes the fourth magistrate on Grand Bahama. Megan Shepard, CNS Network News. Meantime, the local tourism sector continuing to rebound as cruise ships are returning to Grand Bahama. Hundreds of Americans spent their July 4th Independence holiday here on Grand Bahama yesterday. All passengers on board the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. Our ZNS News team visited two locations that are popular tourist spots. Our Megan Shepard tells us more. The Adventure of the Seas making another stop on Grand Bahama on July 4th, the American Independence Holiday. Large buses calling on Pirates Cove as hundreds of tourists decided to celebrate with some fun in the sun. Guests were able to enjoy Bahamian dishes at the buffet, get their hair braided, and have some fun in the water and more. And I'm having a wonderful time. It's beautiful here. Well, uh, it's been really nice. This is my first time on the ship, so it's a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to try paddleboarding now. We, we got to go in the pool yesterday, so that was a lot of fun. And we're having a great time. It's beautiful weather here. Very nice. Yeah, the weather is beautiful. The water is really warm, and the sand is so much softer than the Jersey beaches. Um, yeah, we're excited to paddleboard. And it's just great to be cruising again and back, be back at the beach and having fun and enjoying the 4th of July. How are you guys planning on celebrating doing a little water sports or just hanging on the beach? Oh, today? we're just going to relax and have margaritas. <laughs> now, the scene at the Port Lucayo Marketplace was starkly different. Despite requests from Ministry of Tourism officials for a live band and other attractions, the marketplace was quiet, save for a few tourists. Now, despite the lack of entertainment, these guests say they were still enjoying their visit. From St. Pete, Florida, and I'm enjoying my time here, and all the people are so friendly and very helpful and my son is after cracked conch because he said that's the thing to come for so that's why we're here and i was here about 50 years ago and it has changed it's beautiful now so many more people and my favorite thing i got a new ring so i'm very happy with it my time has been going amazing your island is amazing and it's 4th of July, so we're celebrating with you guys our 4th of July. Your jewelry is amazing, okay? You have amazing jewelry. Let me just say, everybody should come here for jewelry. That's what I love. I'm in paradise. This place is amazing. Uh, we got to swim with the sharks. That was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, so like he said, that's definitely been our favorite part so far. We really liked... Uh, we ate at Pisces uh, last night, though, and we really liked the lobster pizza that we had there, so that was a good time. Favorite drink? I don't know. We've had a lot of good here. ones. Yeah, the sand's beer, sand's honestly, really we're a big good. fan of. Yeah, that stuff hits the spot when you're, like, you know, long day in the sun or something like that. Aside from restaurants and bars, most businesses in the marketplace have been closed on Sundays ever since Hurricane Dorian and throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. These store owners say with the return of the cruise ship, they were looking forward to hundreds of tourists patronizing the marketplace. But the actual numbers were a bit disappointing. This is really starting to look very scary seeing that we are still you know basically crawling you know we have a few people here and there but nothing compared to what i feel like we should be having um seeing as our first day is pretty slow but we really appreciate the locals coming in to support us every day um we are slowly looking forward to seeing more cruise ships and visitors to come in that would be a blessing, but we have to wait and pray, you know. Now, we also spoke with retailers off camera who say they were disappointed with the lack of American themed decorations throughout Port Lucaya. Noticeably absent, the presence of both the Bahamian flag and American flag. Another retailer telling our news team that they decided to open for the first time on a Sunday because of the arrival of the ship. However, she did not feel it was worth it. Some stores decided not to open at all. Megan Shepard, CNS Network News. Thanks, Megan. In other news, the Grand Bahama Independence Committee hosting a press conference in the office of the Prime Minister this past Friday to announce plans for this year's independence celebrations. Senator Jasmine Darius says preparations are made in recognition of the country's 48th anniversary, which will be held under the theme, A Celebration of Life, Revive Us Again. Friday, 9th of July, our National Pride Day at 9 a.m. The flag raising ceremony will be in West Grand Bahama, 9 a.m., the administrator's office grounds. 
In Freeport on July 9th at 10 a.m., our flag raising ceremony will be at the Harold de Gregory office complex on the front lawn. Uh, so if you're in the Freeport area, please come down and join us. Our flag raising ceremony will be in the East Grand Bahama as well, July 9th at 10 a.m. at the Free Town School Grounds. So East Grand Bahama, please join in. On Saturday, the 10th at 3 p.m. will be a recognition and award ceremony in Sweetings Key. So Sweetings Key. Uh, please support the event. And on Sunday, July 11th at 3 p.m., we will be worshiping at Community at Heart Tabernacle, our ecumenical service. We want you to come out and join in support. The Minister of State for Grand Bahama, Senator the Honorable Kwesi Thompson, encouraging all Bahamians to adorn themselves in Bahamian colors and join in the celebration. Independence is a time when we can unify. It is a time when we should promote unity. It is a time when we should promote uh, pride in our country. But it's also a time, especially now, it's a time when we should uh, promote uh, brotherhood and promote uh, looking after our uh, brothers and being our brother's keeper. Uh, we want to thank Senator Darius and all of the administrators, all of the uh, independence uh, uh, team members who have put together uh, these events. Um, they obviously are a scaled down version of what uh, we are used to. However, given the fact that we are still in uh, the midst of uh, COVID and uh, we want to do our best to adhere to the health protocols, uh, we have scaled down significantly the events. Nevertheless, we encourage uh, all our Bahamians and residents uh, to join in. As we continue the countdown to the country's 48th independence and in recognition of the milestone, we begin a five-part series highlighting Bahamian artists who have made a name for themselves in the entertainment industry. Tonight, we feature a man whose music has landed him on platforms across the Bahamas. And in every song, you are sure to hear about the 242. Romico Knowles reports. was born a rapper, last name Smith, and his first name Papa. Born in the rat, grow up in Jonestown, where we catch clean and cook crawfish and lean snapper. The son of a fisherman, tough like Count Shell. I can leave it like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's visible in his clothing. It's also recognizable in his music. Make no mistake, Alvin Papa Smurf Sims is a man filled with Bahamian pride. Not only is he proud of his country, but he's a proud Grand Bahamian. If you look at Grand Bahama as a woman, she's 48 years old. You know, she older than that, but you know, if you look at it like that, she's 48 years old. Uh, if you Think about your auntie, your mommy could be 48, your, you know what I mean, your sister and all that stuff. Though. It's like, uh, you just look at her with pride, man. Look how far she come. You know what I mean? All the stuff that she going through, all the stuff she dealing with now, and all of that, and you know what I mean? You, you, can't, you can't help but to feel proud of her. You are someone with a signature sound, and you have made Bahamian dialect a part of your music, and that's how people know who Papa Smurf is. When you hear the younger artists today using the dialect in their songs, what does that do for you? You from the Bahamas, I, I personally think you should sound Bahamian, you know what I mean? Because, you know, we in the Bahamas right now, we get mistaken for Jamaicans all the time. You go to America, the first thing they ask you, you Jamaican? Because that's basically all they know, you know what I mean? But now we, we are at a point to where once we talk, people know that we Bahamian because we using our Bahamian accent, you know what I mean? And, and uh, i I actually proud of it. i I happy that the other artists them doing that, you know what I mean? So keep it up. I had the opportunity to feature on one of your biggest records to date. I am a Bahamian, and we're sitting in front of the house 10 years later where we shot that music video. Um, how important is it for you as an artist not only to make Bahamian music, but to make music that is timeless? That's, that's what every artist live for. 
that to make music, that's gonna uplift them, to leave something behind. You know what I mean? And uh, ten years, ten years ago, I didn't know that this song was gonna be, still be around or whatever. But that's the thing about it. I just make the music. The music has taken on a life of its own, and, and I just happy that this song was uh, was one of them that did that. You know. Uh, it feel good, man. Um, this year, you introduced us to a new sound from Papa Smurf, and you embraced Bahamian culture a little bit more, and touching with your rake and scrape roots. Talk a little about that. Well, that, that was a long time coming, you know, because every, every time I touched the stage, even though I was rapping, I would touch the stage with rake and scrape artists, because uh, they would get me for heritage festivals and Junkanoo festivals and all that stuff and, and, and basically those are cultural type uh, festivals and even though I rap, I, I still sing like more like more Bahamian music, you know what I mean? Like, like I say, music that relates directly with the Bahamian. In a song titled Bahamian Pride, Papa Smurf writes that the Bahamas is small on the map but big in size and no matter which island of the Bahamas you are from, he believes that you ought to show your Bahamian pride. Yes, yes, Bahamas. This is your boy, Papa Smurf, and I just want to wish you a happy 48th Independence Day. Y'all be blessed, stay blessed, live and love life. We out. Hey, report Ramiko, now stay with us. There's more news right after this break. When you're operating at the highest standards, something remarkable happens. You don't just meet your goals, you exceed them. You don't just respond to needs, you anticipate them. And you know that failure comes with consequences. You deserve the best we have to offer. And this is why we're working to ensure that we deliver on our commitments. And we will take responsibility when we don't. You have high expectations. And we're committed to doing what it takes to exceed them. Across the Bahamas, we're more connected than ever before as we upgrade and expand our network, elevating your connection with BTC super fast fiber internet. More people can access the best high speed internet on our upgraded all fiber optic network, providing you with a better experience working remotely, learning virtually, accessing more from home, and connecting with more opportunities. Visit our website or any store to upgrade to our super fast fiber internet experience on the Bahamas best fiber network. Don't let COVID-19 stand in the way of your education. The Bahamas Institute of Business and Technology has convenient online courses, which you can complete anywhere, anytime. Completing my degree was affordable and convenient with BIBT's leading edge online classes. And now I have a great job and advancing in my career. BIBT, respected, affordable, recognized, and approved. Delivering quality education across the entire Bahamas. Visit BIBTBahamas.com for more information. Hi, I'm Olympia Ferguson from Budget Pest Control. On Grand Bahama, there are only two types of homes, those with termites and those that will have termites. The signs you should look for are dry wood termite fecal pellets, subterranean termite shelter tubes, and of course damaged wood. We now have on Grand Bahama the Coptis Hermes formosanus, or the super termite, which can do extreme damage in a very short period of time. To know more and to protect your investment, contact the termite experts at Budget Pest Control. With us, it's not just a company behind you, but a family. We are located on 13 Forest Avenue. Call us today at 351-7378. Island Bedding is the Bahamas' leading manufacturer in mattress sets. But did you know, we also carry top quality products like pillows, comforters, sheets, and much more. Our furniture line is also expanding to meet the needs of those rebuilding. We have bedroom sets, sofa beds, recliners, accent pieces, and so much more. Come and experience Island Bedding today, where everybody deserves their own island. Your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. 
Welcome back. Well, employees of ZNS Northern Service are now better equipped to provide service in adverse weather conditions. Thanks to a local company's donation of high quality rain gear. The donation taking place at Empowering to Prosper Limited, Romiko Knowles was there. Raincoats are a necessity for those whose professions sometimes call for them to work in deteriorating weather conditions. Ronnie Okono, president of ETP Industrial Limited, says he is pleased to provide employees of ZNS Northern Service with the protective equipment to show his appreciation of their work, particularly during the hurricane season. I think back on not just Dorian, but in, in, in prior hurricanes, as I saw your staff out there braving the elements, and I'd look at what they would be adorned with, I'm like, boy, they need a little help, you know. So I thought, you know, this time around, we pray that uh, nothing else comes like another Dorian. Uh, but we just thought, uh, my wife and I thought it would be fitting to just uh, partner with you guys. And I know at least next time I see you on TV, I, I know you'd be, at least from a rain gear standpoint, you'd be properly covered. ETP Industrial Limited was established in 2016 and specializes in the sale of a variety of protective gear and safety items. The difference with ETP, like what we hit, the store that you're in right now, we don't sell one or two safety items. We are a manufacturer rep, uh, a company called Port West. It's a UK-based company. They've been producing these safety and hazmat products for over 115 years. And we are the Bahamas distributor for them. So the garments are top quality. They're all certified, ANSI rated, OSHA certified. And these are the garments that you need, especially persons in commercial settings, in the, especially the industrial settings. So we have all the FR products around, um, the chemical suits and you know all the stuff with high visibility these are the things that you need apart from being a one-stop shop for all things safety okono says they are also a manufacturing company we're now manufacturing these disposable masks right here at my shop in the back okay. we have the equipment and as you can see it looks just like any other product that you would buy or, or bring in so we we were able to actually get that going and we can, there's, there's cases about 5,000 right behind you there. We could produce 50,000 of these a month, okay? So we can supply the Bahamas. God forbid something else should come along and, uh, and the supply chain would be disrupted. Deputy General Manager of ZNS Northern Service, Darren Meadows, and Television Manager, Brando Stort, on hand receiving the donation and expressing thanks. As we take receipt of these equipment, we would just like to say that we are thankful that you would see it fit as a corporate citizen to, first of all, appreciate what we do. Yes. And you, you are responsible in terms of being able to put your money where your mouth is. And when we wear these gifts, we will wear them with pride. Uh, and we are pleased to know that, that, that someone really sees the benefit of what we do. And not only going to talk about it, but, but you're willing to put your dollars behind it and we really appreciate it. We do serve an important role. Mm -hmm. uh, our role is information and so we go out there, we get the information, gather it, bring it back and then present it to the public. And so now I believe that we'll be able to do it in a more safe way. Ramiko Knowles, ZNS Network News. And now to our holistic health segment tonight, our Jamila Mizik tells us that ballroom dancing is the latest craze and many use it as a stress reliever. Health, we're waltzing into the art of ballroom dancing. This week, we stopped on by the GB Resilience Center to join a ballroom dance class. Instructor Charles LaRota says since February, the Resilience Center has been hosting the class, but due to COVID restrictions, they are only able to accommodate couples only. He explains ballroom dancing. Ballroom dancing is uh, one step below ballet, two steps above hip hop. It's like the piano of the musical instruments. It's coordinated and it's European in origin. We're working on two dances now. We're working on the waltz and we're also working on a cha-cha. The cha-cha is more of a fun dance and it, it allows you, it gives you a little more energy than the waltz, but it allows you to express yourself even better. And it is a way of freedom. It's sort of a free yourself up type of dance and it's a Latin dance 
so it's very up-tempo. LaRota says dancing acts as a good stress reliever. So what happens is when you're so focused on your dance and your movements and your music, you forget the rest of the world. It, it takes you away from the everyday stress. It's, it's a great way to deal with, with stress because it takes you away from it for a moment that you can see it, you can see a path clearly when you do get back into the real world, I call it. But dance is, I know during my days in dance class, our expression was dance is a way of life. It's a part of life. He notes that because ballroom dancing requires working with a partner, it can also be used as a relationship builder. A lot of ladies I know love to dance. A lot of husbands I know say they can't dance. So with the Resilience Center bringing in couples only as a part of our um, COVID protocol, it, I think it makes a better relationship between the couples because they're finally doing something that they could work together. And ballroom dancing, especially during the waltz, the waltz calls, calls for total concentration, total coordination. And that's one of the few times the men get to lead the women around. And LaRota says it is also a great form of exercise. Like any other exercise and like any other dance, dance is one of the best ways to train your mind because you have to think before you move. You have to formulate in your mind what you're doing. You have to focus. You have to concentrate. And you have to be totally into the realm of that music and the, to allow the music to flow through your body so that the movements could coordinate with the music. And it's basically an exercise in concentrating. It's a mind exercise. Keeps you sharp, keeps you alert. And also, it's physical exercise as well. Most people don't realize how much physical exercise you get when you're dancing. Well, I decided to give it a try, and let's just say it was definitely a workout. Until next time on Holistic Health, I'm Jamila Mizik. Good job, Jamila. Now our Facebook friend of the day when we return. Elevate your fiber home internet and unlock an unlimited mobile experience. Third Dimension on Yellow Pine Street introduces its new home improvement center. Step into our brand new fully stocked showroom for the latest in doors, tiles, housewares, kitchenwares, bathwares, vanities, power tools, electrical and plumbing supplies. So stop by our showroom to view our full range of products or call the Home Advisor hotline at 602-0935 today. We are your Home Advisors. Get more and save less at Bellevue Business Depot. As the largest office supply store in Grand Bahama, we offer a large variety of office supplies, furnitures, computers, laptops, tablets, sanitizing products, and much more. Want to check emails or log on Facebook? Visit our cyber center where we offer low rates for the use of the computers. In addition, we provide printing services for all your booklets, copies, house plans, and much more. While you wait, don't forget to visit our cafe where we offer fresh Bahamian patties made daily, hot flavored coffees, mochas, and much more. Want to send or receive 
receive money. Do it right here at our Western Union located in our main store. Need your computer repaired? Visit Computer Kingdom where they specialize in computer software and repair. Your complete one-stop shop for your everyday needs. Visit Bellevue Business Depot located on Queens Highway. We are open Monday to Friday 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We can be reached at 688-6200. Small office space is also available for rent. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Bellevue Business Depot. Across the Bahamas, we're more connected than ever before as we upgrade and expand our network, elevating your connection with BTC super fast fiber internet. More people can access the best high speed internet on our upgraded all fiber optic network, providing you with a better experience working remotely, learning virtually, accessing more from home, and connecting with more opportunities. Visit our website or any store to upgrade to our super fast fiber internet experience on the Bahamas best fiber network. Yes, sir. What you saying, bro? Why wow, everything cool? Right here, waking dead hot. What you doing for lunch? Are you catching me here checking out this ZNet shopping network site? I looking at this out to see deal. Yeah. How do one go? For thirty dollars, you get a fifty dollar coupon. Twenty percent off fish at the stand, plus you get ten dollars in minutes. Come on, you can't beat that. Well, out to sea it is. Log on to www.zennshoppingnetwork.com. Select the island of your choice and shop anywhere, anytime. Your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Tamika Gibson, you are our Facebook friend of the day. Thank you so much for your support. And we want to say a happy 90th birthday to Alberta McKenzie watching from North Carolina. Make it a fantastic celebration. And that's going to do it here for us in the North. I'm Natalia Hall. The Bahamas Tonight continues. Coming up in the Bahamas Tonight, the National Report... A deadly plane crash over in Abaco. Things to know about new COVID variants. A significant drop in local COVID cases alongside another death. And a public building's renamed. Those stories and more when the Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, returns. Lopindo, welcome to the Bahamas tonight. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news, tragedy striking Abaco following reports of a fiery plane crash in Treasure Key that claimed the life of all on board. We're told the incident happened around 3.05 p.m. when the aircraft, a twin-engine jet commander, left the Treasure Key airport. Authorities confirming that two people were on board, both believed to be Bahamians. The incident is under active investigation. We will have more for you in a later newscast. In other news this evening, despite the inroads many small island developing states have made in preventing widespread transmission, the World Health Organization's warning that we are in a very dangerous period in the COVID-19 pandemic. And this as the Delta variant quickly becomes the dominant strain as it continues to evolve and mutate now detected in some 98 countries and spreading. This may be due to the fact that the virus reportedly carries a cluster of mutations that helps it infect human cells more easily. Equally worrisome is the emergence of the seventh variant of interest, the Lambda 
that's sweeping Latin America, namely Peru, Chile, Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, and Mexico. Outside of that, the United Kingdom. Said to be more transmissible, Lambda's unusual mutations is reportedly stumping scientists. What is, however, assuring is that at this point, no evidence points to it being a more severe form of COVID. Still, health officials continue to push the message of vaccinations, hoping to expand the local arsenal. The Bahamas is awaiting its share from the United States. And that's a tranche of doses of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine, the arrival of which is said to be imminent. Now, as indicated, the number of COVID-19 variants out there is climbing with experts at the Centers for Disease Control predicting that new ones are expected to occur, at times emerging and disappearing, other times persisting. Here at home, health officials haven't confirmed any variants in country, at least not yet. With a closer look at the issue is our Alta Vis Munnings. Global studies have shown that the Delta Plus variant is another COVID-19 dilemma for health experts who continue to monitor the Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and original Delta COVID-19 variants striking countries around the world. The World Health Organization reasons that the Delta variant, initially detected in India, is both more transmissible than previous variants and has been able to resist the antibodies in human blood. World Health Organization officials confirm, though, its emergency use listed COVID-19 vaccines do protect against developing severe disease, hospitalization, and death due to the Delta variant. As of July 2nd, the World Health Organization has detected the Delta variant in 98 countries around the world. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, the variant accounts for 25% of new COVID-19 cases in the United States and is present in all 50 states. We do suspect, as I said from March of, uh, of this year, that we believe we do have one of the five variants of concern in the country. Uh, initial testing showed that we had a variant, um, but we'd sent off samples, uh, which we were still, um, were still uh, awaiting the results. At AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Moderna, the vaccines that are being deployed have been effective against all five variants of concern. And so uh, we're just just moving forward with our vaccination program in country. While Health Minister the Honorable Renwood Bells maintains it's not if but when the Delta variant lands in the Bahamas, we asked whether or not this more contagious virus would impact the end of the country's state of emergency that's being proposed for August. Well, we are assessing the circumstance. We really move with the uh, advice of the health care team in the country. Uh, we have said that from the outset. And so we're going to be continuously assessing our circumstances as a nation. Uh, but the beautiful news is that you know, a lot of behaviors are moving forward and taking that first dose. So we're hoping that once the emergency orders have expired, that they will expire. One thing's for sure, though, government stands on its message that vaccination is the best way to deter any variant from impacting the country. It has led to the collapse of hospital systems in a number of countries. We are also on television what it did to our fellow Commonwealth country of India, who was so gracious to give us our first vaccines. I want each of you to be safe from this deadly virus. I strongly recommend that you get vaccinated so that you are protected. Altavis Munnings, ZNS Network News. Well, no surprise here, COVID-19 continuing to impact the healthcare system. Here's Health Minister, the Honorable Renwood Wells, confirming the latest positive cases at the National Reference Laboratory. I believe we would have had probably some 11 individuals um, and we, we believe that we would have traced it to a particular event where they were doing an outreach in the Bahamian community um, that may have brought about that, that, that particular circumstance. But there are, everyone who was tested positive is doing well um, and they're being observed, they're, they're in quarantine and we're looking forward to getting the lab back up and running very soon. The COVID outbreak there hasn't, though, impacted COVID-19 testing as the COVID-19 dashboard shows 64 tests were completed on Sunday, putting that total to 108,898 across the country. We've moved our testing facilities to 
um, PMH, because PMH has three machines, the Gene Expert machine, the Panther, and the Biofire, which we do our testing there. And also we have enlisted the age of Doctors Hospital that has done testing, that has been doing testing throughout uh, this pandemic. They're going to be uh, doing um, the, the, the testing of the additional samples for us as well. Well, just as the test count increases, so do deaths. With another such tragedy reported, the 251st such victim, a 43-year-old New Providence man who died yesterday. This is eight new infections have also been reported, all here on New Providence. Three of the new infections are in males and five in females. The overall case count now at 12,889. Of that number, 812 are active. At last count, 59 people were in hospital, two of them in the intensive care unit. In other news, a public building renamed today in honor of one of the country's female pioneers. Fern Carey tells us that the structure now affixed with the name of a woman who continues to impact the lives of the nation's youth. The building housing the Ministries of Education, Youth Sports and Culture on University Drive now bears the name of former Minister of Education and the country's first female Governor General, Dame Ivy Dumont. On hand for the renaming ceremony, Prime Minister the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Menace, who highlighted Dame Ivy's stellar contributions to the nation. As an educator, public officer, politician, religious and community leader, consummate professional, unionist, and as the first female Minister of Education and Governor General, Dame Ivy Dumont, has been an extraordinary citizen and a servant leader. Dame Ivy, through your kindness and compassion, you help others to touch the heart of God and to touch your heart. Because of this, you are in the hearts of thousands of Bahamians. Education Minister, the Honorable Jeffrey Lloyd, adding that Dame Ivy's journey from Roses, Long Island to Mount Fitzwilliam is an inspiration to all. The Ministry of Education is proud to have your name associated with it. Even as an adult, you continue to embrace the idea of continual education, both in the traditional university sector and through your consistent spiritual ascension. Hey, my research she's extremely honored to have her name to this public building, and her name will now be immortalized for generations to come. Prime Minister, your government has decided to grant me an honor afforded to very few Bahamians. That is to affix my name to a public building. In it, dedicated public servants will continue to make decisions regarding the future development of Bahamians from preschool and upward. I wish these leaders and their staffs much success and urge them to ensure the superb care and maintenance of this house. Fern Geary. ZNS Network News. Still to come, students take advantage of offerings at BTVI and the countdowns on to the country's 48th birthday. Those stories and more when the Bahamas Tonight returns. And remember to tune in to the morning edition with LaDawn Davis and Charles Fisher at 7 o'clock weekday mornings. We also have news updates at every hour starting at 2 p.m. You can then watch The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition at 6.30 and the National Report live at 7 p.m. All right here on the ZNS Network. This portion of the news is brought to you by Sun Oil Limited Shell, fueling journeys that matter. has changed over the past 60 years, but at Commonwealth Bank, our mission to build lifelong relationships with our clients remains the same. Our customers are more than just a number. Our customers are our family, and together we create banking solutions that fit your unique needs. Commonwealth Bank, leader in personal banking services. You know that feeling you get when you have an uncontrollable desire for fried chicken? That's the KFC. 
A substance that stimulates your senses to identify the aroma of our secret recipe or an extra crispy crunch from any distance. It's invisible to the naked eye, but you can feel it traveling throughout your body, taking control so you can enjoy a juicy bite of KFC. Ignite your senses with KFC. Elevate your experience with BTC Superfast Fiber Home Internet, which unlocks unlimited mobile talk, data, and roaming for as low as $50 per line. Enjoy more savings and value with internet speeds of up to 600 megabits per second and all the connectivity you need on the go. An elevated experience starts with BTC at home, powering unlimited mobile talk, data, and roaming, plus great savings. Visit a BTC store or btcbahamas.com for more details. Health is the greatest gift. That's where we come in. Bahamas Medical and Surgical Supplies is the premier distributor of medical equipment, as well as medical and surgical consumables. Our engineers are always on hand, providing top care service that saves lives. We carry a wide selection of over-the-counter and prescription items, IV fluids, and other injections. Our products are state-of-the-art, and our entire team stays on top of cutting-edge technology. With more than two decades of dedicated service, Bahamas Medical and Surgical Supplies continue to be a trendsetter, an innovator in healthcare. We have set ourselves apart by truly caring for our customers. We understand the intricacies of healthcare and we produce spectacular results. We cherish our partnerships and nurture our friendships as we continue on our quest to help everyone maintain that wonderful gift of good health. Find us on 9th 5th Terrace Centerville, right in the heart of the Medical Service Epicenter of Nassau, Bahamas. ZNS Shopping Network is the place for deals. Check out the deals. Mama Sassy's Gourmet Foods has just for you. www.znsshoppingnetwork.com Select the island of your choice and shop anywhere, anytime. Legend. A story that has been passed down for generations. Remember there was one called the Montague Theatre. It burned down when I was a little boy. I was very happy when it burned, actually. <laughs> because you couldn't <laughs> go there? <laughs> well, I suppose the nationalist, is, first of all, is one who loves his country, can see the danger to his country, and will do his best to avoid those dangers without any hope of reward. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. A 19-year-old to spend his first night on remand at the Bahamas Department of Corrections following his arraignment today. Mario Cuffey is accused of the June 24th murder of Gladstone Francis and the attempted murder of Savannah Francis. The incident taking place just before 4 p.m. that day on Pearedale Road. Investigating officers met the woman wounded and the man lying in the street lifeless. Cuffey was not required to enter a plea. Bail was denied and he was remanded until November 30th for service of a voluntary bill of indictment. Tropical Storm Elsa, a testament to what was projected to be an above average hurricane season with the weather system already breaking records to become the earliest forming fifth named storm. Climatologists and the like have argued that such storms would increase in frequency and intensity all due to climate change. While there are some who do not believe in the concept, Director of the Bahamas Department of Meteorology, Trevor Baston, is in one of them. All climatologists have seen that there's a pattern of peaks and, you know, peaks and valleys, you know, up and down and whatnot. So it isn't like climate changing, warming like that. You might have this tendency for it to go up, but in between the rise, there's some peaks and falls. So no matter what, I would agree that man's influences are affecting the climate, but uh, it is not consistently so. He explains there may be some years where warmer temperatures are noticeable and others where there is a decline in rising temperatures.
there is general pattern over a period of time. Bayston says because warmer temperatures lend to hurricanes, those temperature patterns impact them. The general average pattern is for an increase in climate change. But one thing is for certain, if we continue to have the effect of influencing the climate and which will in cause warmer temperatures or more uh, penetration of the sun over more vast areas, then yes, you will definitely have a warmer atmosphere and which will give rise to the most part for warmer seas or oceans, which will tend for stronger storms. The Bahamas Feeding Network will be the benefactor of several greenhouses, and that's courtesy of the Chinese Embassy that recently donated some $10,000 in goods to the nonprofit organization. Chinese Ambassador to the Bahamas, Her Excellency Dai Qingling, says the embassy also gave assistance to the organization in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian. She says the combined impact of the Category 5 storm and the COVID-19 pandemic would present a major challenge for any country. And the greenhouses will be another way the Chinese can assist Bahamians. We are in the process of uh, purchasing and shipping over to the Bahamas a, green, a number of greenhouses yeah, to help with the farmers directly, to help them to raise their own uh, vegetables and uh, fruits and things like that. Uh, hopefully, uh, these kind of uh, small donations can play a, a, a certain role in helping those people who are really in need. And we are glad to forge this uh, growing partnership with the Bahamas Net Feeding Network in order to do more in the future. The ambassador says the embassy hopes the small assistance will help to further push agriculture, increasing the ability for Bahamians to provide for themselves. In Chinese, we have an idiom, you know, um, better than just giving people fish, uh, it would be best to teach people how to fish. So I think if we can get agriculture going uh, in this country and make food and vegetable production a fashionable thing to do in, in this society, uh, it, will, it will help many more people and it will make uh, help lower even lower the cost of living so I, I think we by working together we can create even better prospect of uh, uh, fighting hunger uh, in this society the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute continuing to expand its curriculum with enrollment the highest it's ever been. In this report, Carla Palmer shed some light on one of the courses that speak to the interest of many. The Media Technology Program is one of 40 courses being offered overall at the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute, BTVI. Relatively new, the course was implemented in 2017. It provides students with skills needed to obtain careers in the field of radio and television production, as well as positions in other related occupations. Alexia Coakley is an adjunct part-time instructor at BTVI. The Media Technology Program at BTVI is a little known gem. It was really born in the vision that this institution needed something to address a gap that they saw, which was marrying the electronics and technology side with media and communication. With the transition of technical equipment, putting equipment in the hands of people to actually create and get their content out there has never been easier. Since the pandemic, uh, with social media and all of these, all the other uh, social channels that you can use, you're able to now harness all this potential and put it out there. And so, in a timely manner. And so what, we're, what we as instructors seek to do is to really bring that real world experience to the classroom and equip these students. Veteran broadcaster Carlton Smith is credited with developing the program. We have a program here that's driven by a lot of industry professionals that are actually out there working. So they're able to bring their experiences into the environment and take the, you know, the studies off of the page and really make it a, a practical experience for them. I think what is very different about this program, however, though, is um, there are other uh, com media and communications programs available in the country, but this one is the one where you actually can get your hands on the equipment, get to touch and feel, and actually go out there and perform. This is extremely important because the more exposure we can give our students, 
the better chances they have at actually fulfilling some of the careers in the sector. And as you know, at BTVI, the aim is to equip young people to actually get out there and perform. While Andrew LaRoda is graduating from the program in the spring, Mario Neely, currently enrolled in the course, is hoping to follow soon. The program was amazing. I, I can't express how great it was to me. Honestly, from the first day I came here, I, I actually didn't know how it, was, how it was going to be. But then when I stepped into the door, it was just different for me. I'm an artist as well, and since I do music, it actually helped me to say recording myself and music videos because I have music videos as well. I feel comfortable in whatever I do in production. I feel like I could really achieve later on in the future in being a technical director, a producer, a director, a camera operator, and even, I even say, a host. Already, some 55 students have completed the Media Technology course at BTVI. Carla Palmer, ZNS Network News. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Elevate your experience with BTC Superfast Fiber Home Internet, which unlocks unlimited mobile talk, data, and roaming for as low as $50 per line. Enjoy more savings and value with internet speeds of up to 600 megabits per second and all the connectivity you need on the go. An elevated experience starts with BTC at home, powering unlimited mobile talk, data, and roaming, plus great savings. Visit a BTC store or btcbahamas.com for more details. Anything you need, we got you covered. Say the word and we'll come through. So if you need coverage for life, choose BAF, they'll get it right. Just go out and do it. Uh, it's your life, so just live it. So anything you want, you can get it. It's time to get it right. So we won't do it. The best choice, BAF, that's BAF Alive. Are you or a loved one under medical care? Do you need affordable medical supplies? Ports International is the largest home health care supplier. Medical supplies at the very best price. And you can even shop online. From hospital beds to wound care, wheelchairs to walkers, Ports is a one-stop shop for your medical supplies, and we accept insurance. We have online shopping and two locations to serve you at the Airport Industrial Park and Shirley Street. We also ship to the Family Islands. Shop online and visit us on Facebook. Call Ports at 377-1771. Everyone's excited about the $8 meal of the day. Every day, it's a different six-inch sub, plus chips and a 20-ounce drink for just $8. That feels like fresh value. Come in any day of the week for one of your favorite six-inch subs. Like turkey breast, meatball marinara, sweet onion chicken teriyaki, black forest ham, Italian BMT, oven roasted chicken, and tuna. Then add chips and a 20-ounce drink, and you've got the $8 meal of the day. A great meal at a great price every day of the week, only at Subway. When you want to spend money on your tiles and flies, who you gonna call? The Tile King. When you tile your house and you want to look good, who you gonna call? The Tile King. Visit the new Tile King showroom, which is internationally recognized as the finest tile showroom in the Caribbean, located in the Builders Mall on Wolf Road. The Tile King. Who you gonna call? Tiles on everything. Legend. A story that has been passed down for generations. It was in 1964 that we began the transition from the colonial system to a modern parliamentary democracy. And we completed that transition in 1973. Take your time, take your time. 
You sure, right now? Money shot. You sure? All right. Money all right. shot. Okay, okay. Miss, 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 miss. Sick. You know Lou's a buy-in, right? Oh, well, you must be getting kids be late. But I bring no money like that. Plus, you know you greedy. Well, today is your lucky day. Oh. Check out the Zadnet Shopping Network. See what deals they have on food. Look here. Boy, my cap got some super deals. Check it out. You got a $25 coupon for $15 and a $20 coupon for $10. <laughs> well, my cap it is. All right. Hey, I roll them at you, eh? Log on to ZNSShoppingNetwork.com and get your deals today. The countdown is on to the country's 48th year of independence. And this week's ZNS News will feature a number of residents who played key roles during the initial journey. One of them, Reverend Dr. Philip Ramming, the author of the Bahamian Pledge. Dr. Ramming says he was inspired to put pen to paper while in school in Jamaica and witnessed their independence. He says he not only wanted to write the pledge, but was hoping to have his name behind the national anthem. One day in Southern Seminary that it came and I wrote the song for, for, for the national anthem. I wanted the whole hog, the national anthem, but um, I got the pledge. I, I did the pledge afterwards. I, I, I sort of reduced the pledge to about 25 words. I think England says, what, 22. And um, another pledge, 50, 52 words. But we made us to about 15 words. I pledged my allegiance to the flag and to the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, which it stands, one people united in love and service. Independence is right around the corner, and if you haven't done so, time is winding down for you to get that shirt, accessory, or flag that best displays your Bahamian pride. Our ZNS News team went out on the road to talk to a few vendors to see how sales have been progressing. We always start a little bit slow, and um, well, we noticed today things start to pick up. Uh, I guess they're getting into the independence fever. So we have customers trickling in one by one, but hopefully by the end of the week, we expect to see persons coming in so they could show their Bahamian pride. So far, things have been picking up. I started since last week, and we had um, quite a number of customers coming in, persons mostly purchasing for work, because you know, um, usually on the week leading up to Independence, there's National Pride Day, so we had customers who purchased shirts for National Pride Day. And I also had a few customers who have, within their family, they have planning for event for the tent, and they are buying as well. The vendors also speaking on how the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted their inventory. Hard getting things in, um, you know, cost of shipping is up, so um, um, but we still, you know, trying to make it happen for the Bahamian people. We have birthday, we celebrate our birthday once a year. So um, we push to try to get the inventory in for the clients. Because of COVID, yeah, things have changed. I must say things have changed, but in terms of inventory, yeah, inventory has been limited, but a lot of that was done through us because we didn't want to, you know, purchase so much inventory, seeing that the way things are going with COVID, and we, we don't know what to expect, but so far it's been going good. And just in time for independence, the central banks released a commemorative coin that's available July 1st to the 21st. The coin comes as a $10 denomination made from fine silver, weighing in at just over 31 grams and featuring the Abaco parrot. It's nothing new for the bank as the program began back in 1966 with a seven and nine coin set and has been used to signify significant events such as independence, the Olympic Games, as well as the 500th anniversary of Columbus's discovery of the New World. This newest collectible can be found at several authorized dealers, including Coin of the Realm, the Royal Bank of Canada, the New Providence Arts and Antiquities Museum, and Nassau Bullion Limited. A full listing of those dealers is posted on the Central Bank of the Bahamas' webpage. 
Caribbean Journal has composed a list of seven destination spots to head to this month and the Bahamas has made the cut. The online news magazine credits the Bahamas with doing a wonderful job reopening its tourism industry from what it calls a class-leading airport experience at the London Pinling International Airport to a terrifically managed travel health visa system. And that, it said, along with the things that never went away, some of the best beaches on earth, outstanding food, and terrific resorts, big and small. Caribbean Journal slid the Bahamas in the second spot behind Jamaica, who's said to be seeing a full-fledged tourism rebound that's driven by a, quote, simple and easy to understand travel protocol. The Bahamas, however, comes in ahead of pre pre prevent ahead of the Turks and Caicos Islands, Antigua, Bonaire, St. Croix, and St. Bart's. Carnival games, Coney Island hot dogs, watermelon contests, bear chugging, and a whole lot more. All fun and games over at the Atlantis Paradise Island Resort that hosted a 4th of July celebrations for its guest. We've had tons of guests who come to Atlantis every single year, and obviously COVID last year prevented that. So we're hearing from a lot of our guests that they're happy to be back in the Bahamas, and they can't wait to do it again next year uh, because they love us so much here because we do such a good job with our activities and, and, and our hotel as a whole. Atlantis guests were elated to have celebrated America's independence while vacationing in paradise. My family and I love coming here. It's our seventh time coming back. We love celebrating 4th of July here. It's extremely festive. So we thank Atlantis for being extremely festive for all of us visitors. And we feel like we're at home and uh, feeling at home and being in paradise all at the same time. So we were actually supposed to come here a year ago, but because of COVID, we weren't able to. So we pushed our vacation a year back, but we're here so that the kids can enjoy the water slides and, and so that we can enjoy the food and the casino. And it's just a great family resort. Well, it's a family tradition for us. We've come for several years over the 4th of July. So we missed over COVID, obviously. So we're just excited to be back. It's so fun. It's our honeymoon. We've been here for six days. We have six days left. And it's the greatest vacation so I've been good. on. So good. As we head to the break, we'd like to thank all our viewers watching us live on our social media platforms. And just in case you missed the news, be sure to head there to catch up. Stay with us. There's more after the break. You watch them grow and make plans for them even before they're old enough to talk. You spend a lifetime of sacrifice to pave the way for their success and create a tomorrow you too can be proud of. Can you tell who is the investor? At Len, we believe everyone who has ever put a penny aside for a future dream is an investor. If you're new to investing, Lenos financial experts stand ready to design plans based on your goals. Let's sit down and explore the options one-on-one -on -one and see how Together, we can make your dreams come true. Whether considering traditional investments like a new home, car, your own business, security and retirement, or your child's college fund, we take the confusion out of the process and make an investor out of you. Call 396-3225 for an appointment. Leno, your bridge to the future. Unleaded improves your fuel economy, giving increased miles per gallon, allowing you to do more of what you really want. Special additives used in Shell Unleaded improve your engine's efficiency. So go further with Shell Unleaded. Venture out to beaches, junkanoo, and festivals, and bring home memories that will last a lifetime. Shell, fueling journeys that matter.
1973 marked the beginning of something great in these beloved islands, an event that would reflect the values and tastes of the Bahamian people for generations to come. National pride has gone hand in hand with this momentous occasion, which will forever be known throughout Bahamian history as the birth of Aquapure. Sharing its birthday with the nation isn't what makes Aquapure great. It's Aquapure's commitment to quality and to the people of the Bahamas that drives us to be the best. Aquapure, pure Bahamian since 1973. Make your appointment today at vax.gov.bs. That's vax.gov.bs. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in conjunction with Bahamas Information Services. Legend, a story that has been passed down for generations. I've always wanted to be an entertainer. Man. And they, they, they all tell me, like, you know, being an entertainer, you don't make any money, and it is short-lived, and there's all kind of pitfalls, and yabby, 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 yabby. But the idea is, man, I love what I do. His powerful voice came to personify the T-Connection. surveillance team members still on the island of Bimini assessing the increase in COVID-19 cases there. It's been nearly a week now that a 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew was instituted to limit a recent spike in cases. We got this update from the health minister. There was a particular establishment that a lot of the individuals in Bimini frequent uh, where we suspect um, that the uh, uh, proliferation of the virus took place. We've been encouraging the folks in Bimini to continue to adhere to the health protocols. We know the solution to what gets us beyond where we are now with COVID, and that is for folks to continue to vaccinate. And there's also no definite date on when Bimini's new curfew will expire. Well, you know, this virus works on a 14-day cycle. Um, and so we're assessing the circumstance over the 14 days that we've seen the rise. Um, once, we, once we would have uh, done the uh, analysis, um, the assessment reports of what's going on inside of Bimini as the cases decrease, then we'd better be, the health team would then be able to make other recommendations for the government of the Bahamas, for the cabinet to then take into consideration. Well, it's time now for a check on Family Island weather with Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean. Good evening, Basil. Good evening, Makisha. Just before we get into the Family Island temperatures, also at 5 o'clock, uh, was moving uh, northwest at 14 miles per hour across western Cuba, and it has um, those winds have reduced to about 50 miles per hour, but we expect it to regenerate as it gets over the uh, waters of the Gulf of Mexico sometime uh, tomorrow, so we'll keep our eyes on it. No problem for us here in the Bahamas, but you can see that feeder band working its way off the northwest Bahamas that will continue to lift the waters to north during the course of tonight and tomorrow. Outside of our studios, mostly cloudy skies, temperature 86 degrees, the relative humidity at 78 percent. We have southeast winds at 14 miles per hour, the barometric pressure 1,018.0 millibars, that's 30.06 inches, and the pressure is steady. Temperatures around the outlets this evening, they are brought to you by Family Guardian Insurance Company. We're protecting you. It is 84 degrees in Freeport, Grand Bahama, Great Key, and Marshall Barbaco. The Berry Island, 77 degrees, 78 in Alistair, Bimini. Harbor Island, a little warm there at 85 degrees, 85 also in Roxani Lutra. 
Black Point Exuma 86 degrees, 86 in Kemp Space or Andros. Fresh Creek Central Andros at 85 degrees. Artistan, Catalan, San Salvador, Rimke and Georgetown Exuma all at 85. 85 is also in Ragged Island, Clarence Down, Long Island, and Crooked Island. Betsy Bay, 84. Acklands, 84 degrees. Matthew Tanny, Nagua at 85. And the Turks and Caicos Islands at 83 degrees. And your boating forecast tonight is brought to you by Builders Mall, home of FYP, the Tile King, and the Pink Setter. In the Northwest and Central Islands tonight, the winds are going to be southeast, speeds 12 to 18 knots. The wave fights 3 to 6 feet. Low tide takes place at 15 minutes past midnight. For the southeast bombers, southeast winds at 15 to 20 knots, wave fights 4 to 7 feet over the ocean. Caution flags up for boaters in the southeast Bahamas. And tomorrow in the northwestern parts of our country, the winds continue to increase southeast at 15 to 25 knots. Very rough seas around 5 to 8 feet over the ocean, so advisories will be put in place for boaters in the northwest Bahamas tomorrow. High tide will take place at 5.56 in the morning with the low tide at two minutes past midday. And for the central and southeastern islands on Tuesday, southeast winds at 15 to 20 knots, wave fights four to seven feet, caution flags for the central and southeast Bahamas. And then on Wednesday, middle of the week, the winds are fall off just a tad southeast at 15 to 20 knots. So that advisory will come down to a caution flag, wave fights four to seven feet. High tide takes place at 6.42 in the morning on Wednesday, low tide at 12.45 in the afternoon. For the central and southeastern islands on Wednesday, Southeast winds, those winds will be increasing 15 to 25 knots in the wave fight building, 5 to 8 feet. So we'll put an advisory in place for boaters in the central and southeastern islands on Wednesday. That's going to do it for your boating forecast. It's time now for your international temperatures. And they are brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. going to do it for your international temperatures brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. But stay tuned, your extended weather forecast is still ahead. Elevate your experience with BTC Superfast Fiber Home Internet, which unlocks unlimited mobile talk, data, and roaming. For as low as $50 per line, enjoy more savings and value with internet speeds of up to 600 megabits per second and all the connectivity you need on the go. An elevated experience starts with BTC at home, powering unlimited mobile talk, data, and roaming, plus great savings. Visit a BTC store or btcbahamas.com for more details. Today is a day for fun. Today is a day for family. So why should yesterday's worries affect my today? That's why I insure my family with J.S. Johnson, because their mission is to provide us with the best insurance coverage possible. With J.S. Johnson, I know my family comes first, so I take comfort in knowing that they always have us covered, providing us with a great today and an even better tomorrow. J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers, giving you peace of mind. Everything is changing, and your favorite hardware and home improvement store is getting with the program. We Buy You Sell is rolling out its new online shopping feature. If you go to our website, wbusbahamas.com, it's a quick and easy three-step process. Step one, browse the gallery and select your item. Step two, add to cart. And step three, check out. Go to our website, wbusbahamas.com, to shop with us today. That's why we got the... Bahamians are anxious about the future. Feeling down and out? Unsure in these unprecedented times? We need to believe that love's coming back. Join us Tuesday, July 13th at 11 a.m. at lovescomingback.com for the virtual launch of Love's Coming Back, an inspiring new anthem from Grammy Award-winning founding member of the Eurythmics, songwriter, producer Dave Stewart, which will premiere globally at 12 noon. Presented by Basic Records, Bahamas National Trust, and RylanAid.org. This is ZNS Total Sports. 
Welcome to sports. Well, the Bombers men's national basketball team finishing off their trip over in El Salvador, part of the FIBA 2023 World Cup pre-qualifiers. 2-4-2 playing the host El Salvador last night and would lead from the jump, taking them down 87-79. The 2-4-2 was led by Travis Munnings, who finished the game with 18 points and 6 rebounds. Garvin Clark had 18 as well with 4 threes. Willis Mackey had 12 as well. Going to last night's game against El Salvador, 2-4-2 had already secured a spot in the qualifiers by winning their first two games of the tournament. In the first game, they came back from an 18-point fourth-quarter deficit to beat Cuba 89-88. On Friday, they then pummeled Costa Rica 75-51. The Bahamas is one of 16 national teams that will advance to compete in the qualifiers in November. Team Bahamas was coached by Chris DeMarco. He was assisted by Moses Johnson and Perry Thompson. After more than a year off due to the presence of the COVID-19 pandemic with limited practice on the waters, a total of 13 Bahamian sailors qualified for the 2021 Optimist North American Championships in Mexico. The team consisted of nine boys and four girls, Joshua Weech, Matthew Reed, Craig Ferguson, Zane Monroe, Cayman Floyd, Conry Rain, Finley Lambert, Norman Cartwright and Patrick Tomlinson were the nine boys in action. With limited time to train, coaches Robert Dunkley and Martin Manrique worked diligently to get the team mentally and prepared for the tough competition ahead with five long days of sailing. As for the competition, Weech and Ferguson qualified in advance of the goal fleet. Mary Jack Nash and Reed missed the goal fleet by only one and two points respectively. The rest of the team sailed in the silver fleet over the last two days of racing. And on the silver fleet, the Bombers would steal the show with Cayman Floyd taking first place and Matthew Reed taking third. The Bombers also currently has five young sailors competing in the 11 through 15 age division in the 2021 Optimus World Championships over in Italy. In baseball news, Jazz Chisholm and the Miami Marlins dropping the final game of their weekend series to the Atlanta Braves yesterday, 8-7. Chisholm Jr. was out of the starting lineup after tweaking his ankle in the seventh inning of Saturday's game. Chisholm would enter as a defensive replacement in the ninth inning and would score a run in that inning. The Marlins would drop to 35-47. and 47. They're currently fourth in the National League East. WMA News, John Quell Jones in her second game back in the WMA Hardwood this weekend as she would suit up for the Connecticut Sun as they would take on the Indiana Fever. The Fever would get the best of the Sun in the matchup, winning 73-67. to Jones would finish the game with 16 points, 9 rebounds, and 2 assists. For much of the past month, Jones was overseas participating in Eurobasket with Bosnia and Herzegovina. Her absence was a blow to the Connecticut Sun and the WNBA. For the season, the Sun are now 10-3 with Jones in the lineup. They're 12-6, which has them just a half game behind the Las Vegas Aces and Seattle Storm for first place. And that's been a look at sports. Quick check on weather when we return. This is ZNS Total Sports. Every day that ends in a Y is a great day to save at super value and quality supermarkets. Rainbow corn beef, 12 ounce can, $1.99. Super value alkaline water, 5 gallon size, $4.99. Sweet tangerines, 3 for $1.59. Rainbow evaporated milk, large can, 4 for $3.49. Pork chop ends, $2.39 per pound. Working hard every day to keep your prices down. That's super value and quality supermarkets. Welcome to our first installment of Alive's Community Corner. Not only is Alive a digital service provider, and beyond those great deals and services that we provide you, Alive is committed to the community. So here's a look at what we did for Mother's and Father's Day. you 
episode, and we look forward to sharing with you so many more of our community moments. So why alive? Because you deserve it. are anxious about the future. Feeling down and out? Unsure in these unprecedented times? We need to believe that love's coming back. Join us Tuesday, July 13th at 11 a.m. at lovescomingback.com for the virtual launch of Love's Coming Back, an inspiring new anthem from Grammy Award-winning founding member of the Eurythmics, songwriter, producer Dave Stewart, which will premiere globally at 12 noon. Presented by Basic Records, Bahamas National Trust, and RylanAid.org. Yes, sir. What you saying, bro? Why, wow, everything cool. Radio weekend, dead hot. What you doing for lunch? Are you catching me here checking out this Z and that shopping network site? I you looking at this out to see, dear? Yeah. How do one go? For $30, you get a $50 coupon. 20% off fish at the stand, plus you get $10 in minutes. Come on, you can't beat that. Well, out to see it is. Log on to www.znsshoppingnetwork.com. Select the island of your choice and shop anywhere, anytime. Legend, a story that has been passed down for generations. Remember there was one called the Montague Theater. It burned down when I was a little boy. I was very happy when it burned, actually. <laughs> because you couldn't <laughs> go there? <laughs> well, I suppose a nationalist, is, first of all, is one who loves his country, can see the danger to his country, and would do his best to avoid those dangers without any hope of reward. We've heard your concerns about the COVID-19 vaccine, and we're here to give you some of the facts. The COVID-19 vaccine is absolutely safe and effective. We've seen that it definitely helps prevent people from getting severe illness and from death due to COVID-19. So people should take this vaccine firstly to protect themselves from severe illness and death. But they should also be taking this vaccine to try and help the country get herd immunity. So while you may be sitting on the fence wondering what the vaccine might or might not do, right now you can be sure that the virus itself can certainly make you ill at any age in whatever physical condition you may be in. If you have comorbidities, diabetes, hypertension, and even obesity, do make sure that you get your COVID-19 vaccine as soon as it becomes available to you. Time now for weather. In our final look at weather in the tropics at 5 o'clock this afternoon, uh, Elsa was moving uh, towards the northwest at 14 miles per hour across western Cuba. Heavy showers taking place there as we speak. We have some feeder bands working their way over the uh, extreme northwest Bahamas that will continue to lift tonight as Elsa continue to make that trek towards the north and west. Maximum sustained winds have reduced to 50 miles per hour, but we expect it to uh, re-intensify once it gets into the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico sometime during the early morning hours uh, tomorrow. And the forecast track will keep it uh, northwest uh, uh, right through tomorrow, and then by late tomorrow, it will turn more towards the north-northwest before shifting towards the northeast. That will take place sometime on Wednesday when they expect also to race along the east coast of the United States. 
Mostly cloudy conditions tonight here in the capital, 79 degrees for your low temperature. And tomorrow, we're looking at a much improved day, but a bit on the breezy side with intervals of clouds and sunshine. High temperature around 89 degrees and your extended weather forecast. Lots of sunshine back into the forecast after several days of cloudy skies. Temperature-wise, they're going to stay in the upper 80s. So once again, stay hydrated during the daytime because of those very warm temperatures and the abundance of sunshine. Makishla. Well, thanks, Basil. That does it for the Bahamas tonight. We thank you for continuing to make ZMAS your number one news and information network. Only the sun covers the Bahamas better than ZNS. On behalf of the entire team here, thanks for watching and good night. the ZNS Network, the People's Station.